right, today's an epic day because we're going to Nitro Gear and Axel. Had an epic time, three days here with Sherp Tech, Ryan and Rebecca, and Aaron and his wife came out and it was just an awesome time out here in the woods after the rally. Anyways, Aaron was talking to me, he's gonna get his truck re-geared at Nitro Gear and Axle. So I figured we should probably go check that out. Um, and honestly, I wanna learn about gear ratios a little bit more, how they apply to overlanding, off-roading, um, and just full timing and getting the most out of my truck, my motor, my drivetrain, all that good stuff. So super excited to go meet Carl. Um, the owner of Nitro Gear and Axle. Let's head on out. Way cool. Bum ba de bum, bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum. Oh, yeah. Well, we made it, and we got Aaron and Carl from Nitro Gear and Axle. And uh, yeah, the old Worth Exploring rig is all torn apart. So we're deep into the axles. But yeah, we're going to have uh, Carl just kind of tell us what's going on with the rig and show us around the shop. Hey guys, I'm Carl with Nitro Gear. Uh, We've got Aaron Worth's rig in here. Uh, I've known him for a number of years from events like Overland Rally, and this year he contacted me before, and he's known he's been wanting to do it, but finally time to re-gear, because he's got 37-inch tires, you know, a real heavy bed, and a camper that he, you know, they're out of it all the time. So what we're gonna do is put 456 gears in it to bring the RPMs back up to where they should be, keep it in overdrive, uh, better low-end performance, just just proper gearing to help haul around the weight that he's got with the tire size that he's got. Hopefully pick up some good fuel economy, but more than anything, just drivability. We've been talking about this for a few different events and, you know, he said, well, how about after Northwest Overland Rally, because we're actually located only about 20 miles from Overland Rally. So that was a pretty common idea for a lot of people. We've been pretty book solid, but we got Aaron and Renee camped out in the parking lot and we were working on the gears and yeah. hopefully turning the truck around so it'll drive completely different after. Yeah, I pulled up obviously Dodge Mahal right here next to this <laughs> beast. So this is, uh, it's off-road power product, power products unlimited, it's off-road power products and diesel power products. Okay. They're a dealer of ours, we're good friends with them. Uh, they're just over in Spokane. Um, so they, they bring us their trucks when they need geared and locked and all that kind of stuff. So, or when they break them like this one. <laughs> but this truck's done Ultimate Adventure and that's what it was built for, which is a Peterson's four wheel drive thing that's been long running where it's basically made to go and break your truck and drive 1500 miles or whatever on the road during the course of a week and you break your truck every day. <laughs> uh, I've done it before too. It's, you know, you do some pretty extreme wheeling. And, yeah. You know, That's you cool. do you do whole day nonstop, pretty much extreme wheeling, yeah. and then you drive, you know, 500 miles the next day or something like that. So yeah, that's you're crazy. fixing stuff in the middle of the night. You don't sleep. You eat out of gas stations. <laughs> it's it's kind of one of those trips. That sounds like a great time. Yeah, yeah. But they built this. It's a it's a Ram, but um, it's a regular cab, but it's got the shorter bed on it. So yeah. the frame's actually been shortened. So it's actually a pretty short wheelbase, you know, to, to use on actually, you know, tight trails, Jeep trails and stuff like that. 40 inch tires and then it's got a, you know, set up with some pretty awesome suspension with Fox shocks and uh, it's got our gears and stuff in it with ear lockers. Um, they did a coil over conversion here. The coil overs are pretty cool how they're Frenched in the frame. Oh, wow. Like that. Wow. That is really nice work. You know, custom bumpers. The rear is a uh, mercenary off-road bumper. We actually had uh, their bumpers on uh, one of our Rams and a couple of rigs, but really high, low profile type stuff. Yeah, that's tucked up you in know, there. Off, uh, 
rooftop tent, and it, you know, this is a Cummins. You know, so this truck is tiny compared to that. I mean, I bet this thing moves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this thing is sweet. But yeah, just a lot of uh, stuff like that. And then this is my daily driver Tacoma that we just built. We use this for um, actually one of the reasons why we have so many Tacomas booked is the factory gearing is this is probably the worst example of factory gearing. <laughs> Finally, I have some answers on why these third gen Tacomas have some weird shift patterns. A couple of my buddies have had them and they always seem to shift really weird and at random kind of times and have trouble holding gears. Um, especially when they're lifted with bigger tires. So anyways, Carl goes into some great detail on this, so much so that I figured I should wrap it up into a separate video to hopefully grab the attention of some Tacoma owners and help educate them through Carl's greatness because I really, uh, I didn't know any of this before I heard it. But let's get back to Aaron Wirth's uh, re-gearing his Ram and Carl chatting about that. Too, like with the Rams, mm -hmm. You know, they've got, they make a ton of power. The Cummins has a lot of low end torque and power and gearing is completely different. So a lot of people, you know, think they may not need to re-gear because they have so much power and the vehicle still drives and stuff like that. But, you know, really until you do it, you don't know what you're missing. Right, um, yeah. Because the rules still apply on a, on a big diesel. You know, if they, they're coming with pretty tall gear ratios from the factory. So they're kind of on the borderline of needing re-geared anyways with stock tires. You put a bigger tire on, it reduces the RPM, then it needs gears even more, and then you got a big heavy bed and a camper on it all the time, and you know, it makes a big difference. You know, if you look at like the, the 4500 or 5500 chassis, um, a 5500 Ram, you know, with uh, say a stock, like a, like a 410 gear ratio or something versus a 488, because they come with really low gears in those trucks because they have huge tow ratings. Yeah. But the tow rating between the two is, huge i mean like almost double right you know so gearing makes a big difference yeah 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 i think it's something that not everyone like thinks about right away yeah um i've, I've been in mountain biking motocross yeah. rc cars and gears are like obviously a quick and easy thing and, and you get a lot out of it yeah but i think with big rigs especially yeah the bigger they are harder they are to get up on a yeah. lift the more you're just like kind of settling with what you have. There's some diesel performance type shops that we deal with and, you know, uh, we've even re-geared, you know, brand new truck, you know, their tow vehicle, that's the dually. Re-gear it and they don't touch anything on it because, you know, you don't want to be right. broken down on the side <laughs> of the road. With, totally. Uh, you know, crazy souped up stuff. You know, it's different if it's for diesel drag racing and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But for a tow rig or something that you're living on on, on the road, you know, you want to keep it as reliable as you can. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, fun to drive. Yeah, fun to drive. That's a big thing with like the gears and like the Hellwig stuff. Uh -huh. And I've been learning a lot more about oh, all yeah. of these and how it, it's funny too, because they've kind of always been on my truck since I've had yeah, it. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this thing's yeah, great. Too. And, but now I'm like, I know why. Yeah. Why it's good. Oh, yeah. And, so uh, like, you know, our F450 camper out there, you know, it weighs 17,000 <laughs> pounds and it's got a Cummins. Yeah. Uh, swapped into it and it's twin turbo but mainly because we had to do different turbos anyways not really to try to make the most power out there possible although it does make a lot of power but it's got <laughs> 538 gears to match the military 41 inch tires and so it you know it just drives like it should I mean you can drive it like a car 70 miles an hour on the freeway no problem Jeez. never downshifts Jeez. you can go over any mountain pass at the speed limit um, you know, and I don't run it on, uh, there's several settings for the power performance and I run it, I don't run it on anything high, you know, it's just yeah. the gearing makes it possible. I, I wouldn't have guessed any of those sentences. <laughs> According to like with that truck, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. That thing's big. It's man. out here. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. looking at it. So we should definitely check that thing out. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it started it's got a off name. as an Explorer with an X this is the company, that small company they did. There's a few of them out there. They're kind of hard to find. It was already an RV, but we modified it pretty extensively. Um. Whoa. Well, this was the first 30 plus foot 4x4 RV home on wheels expedition vehicle that I've ever had the pleasure of filming. And this thing is absolutely amazing. But I've already taken up almost 10 minutes of your time, so I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe so you don't miss the next video 
where I'm going to show you this epic RV. Um, and also, I'm going to catch you up on my story on the road. The episodes kind of trickled off for a little while. I've been so busy, but I've been filming tons. So I'm also going to catch you up in a couple episodes on my story. But thanks for watching. Glad to have you along for the ride. Really, the only question is, are you down to mob? Thank <laughs> you.